Hello folks, you're here with the Drone Guys today. Um, I'm down here in the Drone Guys test labs where we do our camera and crash testing. Uh, that's not what we're going to talk about today though. We're going to talk about why you would take uh, the remote pilot exam, otherwise known as the unmanned aircraft exam by the FAA. So why you'd want to take that and how you can pass the test. Now uh, we are in a uh, special situation where we can talk about how to do that because uh, one of us, that's me, actually was able to pass. And here you can see 90% uh, is my score. Uh, I'd be cool if I could brag about 100, but when all you need is a 70, uh, I'll go home gladly with anything better than anything uh, 70 or above. So we passed. That's awesome. And um, and so I can tell you about how I was able to do that. Now let's talk first about why you might want to take this exam and pass it. Um, well, there's a couple reasons. First of all, obviously, if you're going to fly commercially, that's the whole point. Uh, you know, the drone guys, we wanted to be able to fly, and we do make a couple pennies here and there uh, from our um, affiliate marketing and our YouTube videos. So we consider ourselves commercial got to take the exam. But there is another reason and uh, you can go ahead and check out uh, the articles about these topics on our website www.thedroneguys.com and that's guys with a Z at the end. And um, But I'm going to go over the content here but if you want to see the links and you want to be able to refer to the maps I'm talking about uh, go ahead and check out our articles on our website. Now um, so back to the topic at hand. Uh, another reason you'd want to do it is just the ability to fly where you want to. So I, what I did is I, I took a look at the uh, Chicago area in particular because that's of particular interest to me. Uh, I live in the greater Chicago area. Now I put up uh, two maps and I'll pull them up on the screen for you. The first one I'm going to show you is all the areas where you're going to need air traffic control clearance and permission to fly your drone if you're a hobbyist. Uh, not looking very good. Uh, chances are you live underneath at least one of these areas. Now these are the areas that I found on the um, terminal aerial chart, which is the detailed view of the Chicago area, that had any kind of airport marking. And I put a five mile radius circle around there. Now it's an approximate map, use it for reference only, you know, I'm not the FAA. But, uh, you know, go ahead and, and, and get an impression of, of you're probably living under at least one of those areas. And if you go to the FAA's Before You Fly app, I recommend you check that out. But you're probably going to find that they find even more locations somehow in that app than they put on their uh, terminal area or their sectional charts, which are the, basically their, their flying maps. Those are what they call those. So um, yeah, it's kind of depressing. Now I'm going to go ahead and put up a different map. And these are just the five airports in that same exact area. So we've, we've gone down from about 30 to just five, area, uh, five airports. And these are the five airports that have what's called controlled airspace uh, underneath um, 700 feet, uh, which is down to the surface and uh, anything over at 700 feet or more why do we care we're only supposed to be flying our drones up to 400 feet whether you're professional or a hobbyist anyway so uh, it's very different right we, we've really got many more places we can fly and far fewer airports that we're supposed to be contacting okay so that's what another reason why you may want uh, to go ahead and take this test um, now We'll give you a little disclaimer here. You know, the drone guys would never condone you fly against FAA regulations, but to give you some perspective, there's a ton of people flying uh, kind of outside of these regulations. I don't think there's a ton of people flying over, you know, Chicago O'Hare Airport. That would be a horrible idea, but people flying in their backyards who aren't getting in trouble. Now, there's a great article. We put a link on our website. The article's from Motherboard and uh, it lists as of June of 2016 everyone in the United States who's gotten into trouble with the FAA. It's just 20 or 30 people. Now these are people who are doing pretty dumb things, okay? 
The drone guides, of course, suggest you check out the website, learn the basic rules and the rules that the FAA really cares about. They repeat them over and over again. Do not fly over stadiums full of people. This is probably the most common way people get in trouble. Flying into national monuments, flying into the White House, uh, large gatherings, um, uh, or near big airports. Somebody flew too close to Logan Airport in Boston, okay? So check out that article, get a feel for how people get in trouble. You will notice a pattern the article mentions. Most of these people are on the East Coast. So there's different branches of the FAA. Uh, the East Coast is a little tighter. You got Washington DC, Boston, New York over there. Um, in the Midwest and West, a lot more open land or is the FAA just a little more lenient? We don't know. But that's the realistic uh, facts of the matter. Uh, we do recommend of course, you uh, follow all FAA regulations. We're certainly doing that. We went ahead and uh, took this test and passed it. Now, let's get into the meat of it. Let's talk about how I passed the test. Uh, so uh, first and foremost, so I'm gonna go through some of the study materials I used. Uh, but if you wanna check out our website, we're also gonna put links up there for some online courses that are paid that you can go ahead and take. Uh, they're not on our, uh, they're not in there yet, but by the time you watch this video, hopefully I got links uh, to these paid courses, and some of them are in person, some of them are online. As for the quality of them, you know, I'm gonna have to go off of uh, what's available from their website and what they tell me verbally, uh, but that's an option for those of you that aren't the best at uh, self-guided study. Um, I'm cheap, so I went ahead and did the self-guided version, and I think it did cost me some time. Uh, there's some more difficult concepts that aren't necessarily explained as well. There's no one to ask questions, so I just had to fumble through it and eventually figure it out. So I think there could be some benefits from taking a course, especially if you can ask questions. Uh, but let me take you through the study materials I used. Uh, first and foremost is the Remote Pilot Small Unmanned Aircraft Systems Study Guide. That's the thing to remember, study guide. Okay, this is 87 pages. Here's how thick it is. Uh, it's got a clip. This has got uh, either, you know, I would say, uh, if you include uh, the next two things I'm gonna show you, it's got about 90% of the information you're gonna need to know. Um, pretty well explained in most cases. In some cases, you kinda gotta look around to fully understand it, but I was surprised, given it is uh, the United States government, kinda how complete this actually was. And there are uh, one typo in particular, I believe I pointed out in our article, go ahead and check it out on, on our website. Um, next up, and the study guide uh, refers to uh, the, these documents. So these aren't actually documents, these are actually web pages. They don't print quite as clean as some of their other PDF stuff. And this is called uh, the FAA Aeronautical Chart User's Guide. This is what it looks like, the website. Uh, I printed it, it probably doesn't print as pretty as actually just looking on the website, but basically these documents are good enough that the study guide kind of does a cop out, directs you instead to the website uh, where you can get this information. There's a, a couple of tabs in this website that you need to look at. There's the VFR terms and the VFR symbols. VFR stands for visual flight rules. Uh, the terms has more textual explanation. Uh, the text in the, um, the symbols, which I printed out separately and is a bit thicker. Um, there's only some sections in that that you do need to know and the study guide tells you which those are. Uh, so you kind of make a note of those. And, and this is not particularly well explained in some of these areas. Uh, some of these topics just kind of have miscellaneous text here referring to it, but not a lot of good explanation. So you kind of got to pull stuff out of the study guide, pull stuff out of the better written um, uh, VFR term section and kind of figure out what's going on there. Um, that's you know an area where a, a real course might help a little bit, but I was able to figure it out. Something you're definitely gonna wanna print out in my opinion is called the Airman's Knowledge uh, Supplement for Sport Pilot, Recreational Pilot and Private Pilot. Uh, quite a tongue twister there, but this rather thick little book, you don't need to commit it all to memory. This is what they're gonna give you when you take the test. So, familiarize yourself with it. 
it comes in handy. They put these images up on the computer screen for you, but they're really grainy and poor even if you zoom in. So you're going to be flipping through this book. You're wanna, going to want to know where stuff tends to be. It is kind of nice what they did is, um, as an example here, you see figure 23 is on page 23, which is a nice uh, touch. Um, here's an example of a sectional map that they're going to be referring to in their questions. Uh, so basically a ton of questions. You'll see this in the practice exams as well. They're going to be referring to this um, manual um, when they talk, ask questions about the weather or about the maps. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, next up is the Remote Pilot Knowledge Test Guide. So this kind of tells, uh, you see I've taken all kinds of notes and scribbled all over it. Uh, at one point it was my scrap sheet. So Remote Knowledge Test Guide. Uh, the um, you know this kind of tells you about taking the test uh, stuff like that it has five more um, example questions a lot of overlap with some of the other practice practice exams and these actually provide the answers right there um, but this is just one place to get information on where you take your test it provides links and all kinds of stuff like that Okay, the advisory circular about uh, small unmanned aircraft systems from uh, 621 of 2016. Uh, this document is basically tells you everything you need to know about the new drone rule that came into effect on August 29th. So it's a lot easier than reading um, 14 CFR Part 107, which has a lot of extraneous information um, and it's just harder to read. I think that this does a good job of going through that content in a much more digestible way. This is uh, fairly thick again. I think it's something like um, 60, 70 pages. But it does contain some little tidbits that the uh, study guide does not. Okay, moving on to practice exams. So the FAA website uh, on UAS, it's pretty easy to find this. And we do provide the links. Is uh, Here is the practice exam. 40 questions. The actual exam will be 60. Uh, they're not kind enough to provide you with the answers, however, but the drone guys are here to help. Um, we scoured the internet. We found a, a nice lady, a very detail-oriented lady. Um, her name is Sarah Nilsson. We've got a link to her website. Uh, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and the website that we link to, you'll find uh, two documents. One's a Word document, one's a PDF. The PDF here provides Sarah's uh, answers to those questions. Uh, highlight it. She highlighted um, straight from the exam. Uh, now, can we verify that she is correct? No. Do I believe these are correct? Yes, I do. I've checked many of them. Uh, I went by them. I trust them. I think she knows what she's talking about. If you see her website, you'll probably be left with the same impression. Uh, next up, uh, she also put up answers to, to some other questions, uh, which uh, you'll see the questions there and the answers. Now these questions, it's not really clear where they come from um, when you look at her website, but these are identical to the questions I saw in an um, online course that's intended for what's called Part 69 pilots, I think it's 69 or 61 um, pilots. Uh, who basically get basically guys who can fly real airplanes, not like uh, me. And um, uh, so that test has a lot more to do with um, just drone rules. It's meant as a way for people who are real pilots to get certified to fly drones, so it really just covers drone content. But at the end of that course, which I do recommend you take, I do have a link of that in, in, in our article as well. Um, it's, it takes you about two hours to get through. It has two tests at the end. Uh, one is, I believe, 20 questions, and you can see the answers as you go. We also posted the answers uh, to those on our website. I, I just PDF'd all images of all the answers, but you can, you can see them yourself. It's not a graded exam at the end there. And then there's a 35-question uh, test that, that covers specifically drones, and that's the test that these guys have to take. Now, just because you're not a uh, a pilot doesn't mean you can't take this course. They let you take it. You can just create a log on, go ahead and take the course, gets you more practice exams, it gets you more another view of the material specific to drones, and it lets you take two different practice, practice tests. If you don't want to go through all that effort to get the practice tests and the answers, check out our article. 
Um, just a few more things I printed out which were less useful. Um, small unmanned uh, aircraft system, airman certificate standards. It looks like this. They provide links to this thing, so I printed it out. You notice I put an X on it and a quick note of what's in here because I didn't really read it much. It kind of tells you what's on the test in, in broad strokes, but you know, you're really going to go off the practice, practice exams to understand the kind of content you're going to see anyway. Um, okay, and then another document called FAA Airman Knowledge Testing. Again, talks a lot about, you know, can you bring a calculator, uh, that kind of stuff, what kind of IDs you need. Uh, but a lot of that information is right on the uh, UAS uh, website at the FAA. And uh, even there's even a typo here. It says age 14, you can take the test. That is not correct. It's age 16. So the FAA, not immune to typos. Um, okay, and finally, uh, learning codes. So I never really figured out what to do with these, but if you do take a look at my uh, test report, it told me the questions that I got wrong. Not exactly, but they gave me codes for the topic. So you hear, see here, PLT 146, that's one of them. Okay, what, is, what does PLT 146 mean? Uh, this document here called the U.S. Department of Transportation uh, FAA, uh, blah, 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 sub, okay, it says the subject is Learning Statement Reference Guide for Airman Knowledge Testing. Okay, it looks like this. All right, um, and uh, it has all these PLT codes in it. And let's just find 146, just out of curiosity now. Of course, if I could flip the page. 146, Recall Airport Operations Traffic Pattern Procedures and Communication Procedures. Great. So I know I made a mistake on some question that dealt with that. That's really going to help me study two years from now when I take this test again. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, but. You know, that's basically it for today. I hope you've uh, learned a lot about uh, why you'd want to take the test and how you might pass. Definitely check out our article. We've got links to everything you saw here and more. Um, again, www.thedroneguys.com. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, come check out our other content, our drone reviews, and our other content as well. I'll catch you next time.